In this video, we're going to be practicing sum and difference formulas. A lot of times you'll be given these formulas. You can find them in a lot of books or online. The sum formulas are uh, describing what happens if you were to add two angles and take the sine or the cosine or the tangent of that sum. So there's two different forms, two, two different sides of the equation. The one form would be, uh, so these are just two different angles, A and B. So you're adding them up, taking the sine. That could be one form. They could also be expanded into this form on the right side where you have the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. Um, the cosine sum formula is a little bit different. Uh, if we're adding two angles and taking the cosine, that would be equivalent to uh, the difference, which is a little strange, but there it is. Um, and so you're going to do cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. So a little bit different than the sine formula. And tangents, the most different of them all. Uh, we're going to have a quotient, a ratio here. Uh, tangent of the first angle plus tangent of the second angle is going to be divided by the difference of 1 uh, minus tangent of the first angle times tangent of the second angle. So you're going to evaluate these angles based on what function you're using and you're going to simplify these equations. Um, similarly, we have difference formulas which are similar but different. So here are your difference formulas. Um, and again, you can look these up um, or you can pause this video and write these down. I'm going to move on to doing some examples though. So how do we apply these formulas here? Let's say that we have angles that we can't just find the values of using our unit circle. For example, cosine of 75 degrees is not so easy to just look up on the unit circle, but we could use our special intervals and break this apart using either a sum or a difference. I'm going to use a sum. So I'm going to say that 75 degrees could be the sum of 45 and 30. So here I'm using my special intervals that I know values for in order to evaluate this one that doesn't necessarily have one right off the bat. All right. So because I'm using cosine and because I'm using sum, I'm going to use my cosine sum formula which says that I have to take cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of our first angle times sine of our second angle. And now we can evaluate these because we can use our unit circle. Hopefully you already know the coordinates. Cosine of 45 is the x value. That's square root of 2 over 2. I'm going to multiply that by the cosine of 30, which is the x value of a 30 degree angle, square root of 3 over 2. Keep simplifying, sine of 45 would be the y value of 45, that would be square root of 2 over 2. And sine of 30 would be the y value, that would be 1 half. So we multiply our fractions, anytime we multiply radicals together, as long as they have the same index, they're both square roots, we can multiply them together under one radical. So 2 times 3 would be the square root of 6, 2 times 2 on the bottom would be 4. Now we have the square root of 2 times 1, that's just square root of 2. And 2 times 2 on the bottom, that's 4. Because these two fractions have a common denominator, I can rewrite the numerators with just one denominator. And that would be my final simplified form. Uh, as long as we kept it in ratio form. If we wanted to convert it to a decimal, you could. I'm going to leave it in this form, though. All right, so cosine of 75 degrees on your calculator would be a decimal value equivalent to this ratio. Well, let's do another example. This time I'm going to work a different way. So a different form of a sum formula. And you just kind of have to match it with those formulas that I gave you earlier. 
This is a sum formula, and it's in the pattern of a sine formula, so it's the sum of sines. So I'm going to rewrite this so that it looks like uh, the left side of those equations that I gave you. So it's going to be a sum of angle A plus angle B, that would be 20 plus 40. So now, makes it a lot easier problem to solve. We're just finding sine of 60 degrees. The sine of 60 degrees would be the y value of a 60 degree angle. The coordinates of a 60 degree angle would be 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. Since I want sine, I want the y value. So my final answer would be square root of 3 over 2. So sometimes you're going to be taking that, uh, that formula on the left side and then rewriting it to look like the right side. Other times you're going to be starting with the right side equation and converting it back to the left side and simplifying from there. So it just depends on what you're given and what you can do with it. Let's try another example. And go back to starting with this form. Now we're going to do sine of 15 degrees. 15 degrees is not one of our special intervals, but if I convert it to a difference formula, I can work with it. So if I know that 45 minus 30 is 15, then I can rewrite it using a difference formula for sine. I'm going to rewrite that into sine of 45, cosine of 30. Now we're using our difference formula for sine. And if we simplify this, sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 45, again, square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 30, again, is 1 half. So simplifying again, we get square root of 6 over 4, square root of 2 over 4, and we rewrite it square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. So when you're using these sum and difference formulas, you're going to get answers that are real similar looking every time, and that's just the nature of these formulas. Again, the sine of 15 would be a decimal value that would be equivalent to this ratio, and you can use your calculators to prove that. All right, let's do one more here. So now we have a problem that looks like one of the right sides of our sum and difference formulas. Uh, we know it's a sum formula. And this is in the pattern of our cosine, so it's a cosine sum. Sorry, that would be totally wrong. That's the trick, the tricky thing about cosine. Um, it's going to be in the pattern of cosine, which means that that's going to be the opposite of what it looks like. So it's going to be a difference cosine formula. My apologies. So there we go. Cosine of 80 minus 20 is how it would be simplified. And that would simplify again to 80 minus 20 is 60. So the cosine of 60 would be the x value of a 60 degree angle. There's our coordinates of a 60 degree angle. The x value is right there, so the answer would be positive 1 half. All right. So there's sum and difference of cosines and sines. Tangent's the trickier one, um, only because it requires a lot of math here. So let's try one right here be our last example. Tangent of 15 degrees. So we know that we can create 15 degrees by using a difference of two numbers. Let's try something different here. We did 45 minus 30 last time. There's also 60 minus 45. That would be another difference that would give us 15 degrees. So it doesn't really matter what you use, you're going to end up with the same answer. So we'll do tangent of 60 minus 45. So if I rewrite that as my difference of tangent formula, then I know I have to rewrite it as tan of 40, oops, sorry. 
tan of 60 minus tan of the second angle, 45, all over 1 plus the product of those two angles. So now we just simplify tangent of 60. Again, you got to kind of know your ratios for tangent. If you haven't memorized, it makes it a lot easier. I know that the tan of 60 is always going to be in the form of the square root of 3. Tan of 45 is always going to be 1. And then on the bottom, you got tan of 60, same value, square root of 3. We're going to multiply it this time by tan of 45, which is 1. Simplify a little bit more here. We got... I'm going to rewrite it just slightly here. So I'm going to rewrite my my whole number first and then my irrational number. On the bottom I got 1 plus the square root of 3. And so here is one trick that you just have to recognize. In order to get rid of radicals on the bottom of a fraction, you have to use what's called uh, rationalizing, but it could also be called using a conjugate. And conjugates look almost identical to the denominators except for the positive or negative. It's always going to be the opposite of what it is in the denominator. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by this conjugate and it should simplify for us. Let's see what happens here. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative square root of 3 is positive square root of 3. Positive square root of 3 times 1 another positive square root of 3. And square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 would be negative square root of 9, which would turn into negative 3. On the bottom, we're going to do the same thing. FOIL, again, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times a negative square root of 3 is a negative square root of 3. Square root of 3 times 1 is square root of 3. And then another at square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is a negative square root of 9, which turns into negative 3. Keep some final a little bit more on top. We have negative 1 minus 3, that's negative 4, and we have 2 square roots of 3. On the bottom, our middle terms cancel, that always happens when you use your conjugate. And we have 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. Just one more step here, we got two different fractions here. Both of these values on the numerator get this denominator, so I'm going to break it up. Negative 4 over negative 2 plus 2 square root of 3 over negative 2 and just simplify each fraction that turns into pa let's see negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2 and 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1 so I'm gonna change the sign here we got a negative value so it's 2 minus 2 minus the square root of 3 so tangent takes a little bit longer to simplify, but as long as you're comfortable doing your math with uh, radicals and fraction math, you should be able to get there. All right. So that's some of difference formulas. Uh, using degrees, in the next video I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use um, radians, um, but it's going to be the same process. So I'll see you in the next video.